Welcome back into HQ. It is bold prediction time as we get you ready for your upcoming fantasy draft. The CBS Sports Fantasy Football Draft Guide magazine is out. So let's talk about it. I said it's out. It's in my hands as well, guys. Nice. <laughs> so excited to get my hands on this. Let's welcome in Dave Richard, who is here in studio with us. Jamie Eisenberg joining us remotely. So, Jamie, I'll start with you. What is your first bold prediction? I'll give you my favorite one, which is uh, three quarterbacks are going to run for at least 800 yards this season. And it's very exciting to see how these guys should perform as fantasy quarterbacks. But when you start with Lamar Jackson, he's already done this a few times in his career. And every time he's done it, he's been a superstar. Two times he's been an MVP of the NFL. And so he's an easy choice to take as the fourth quarterback overall. But hopefully Derrick Henry doesn't limit some of those rushing opportunities. The next two guys are a little bit tougher to trust with Anthony Richardson and Jaden Daniels. Richardson was on pace for over 800 yards rushing. He was on pace for over 800 yards rushing in his final season at Florida. If he stays healthy, I think he will easily go over this mark. And the same thing with Daniels, who was a 1,000-yard rusher at LSU. So if these all, if all three of these quarterbacks go eight, over 800 yards rushing, we could be talking about three guys in the top eight, maybe three guys in the top five. That's what running quarterbacks do for fantasy managers, which is why you should draft them and draft them with a lot of confidence. I love these quarterbacks and I love what Jamie's saying there and the last about uh, 12 hours maybe 14 hours Emily I've been being pelted with well what do you do with Anthony Richardson now because he had this terrible preseason game he actually had a great first drive and then after that things kind of fell apart four off target throws out of 14 that's not so great but what it's done it's created a dip and now some fantasy managers they're gonna be a little skittish to take Anthony Richardson I'm not gonna be one of those guys I think if he falls to round six this is really good value for him. Absolutely would take advantage of that. And he's ranked mostly appropriately in our consensus rankings. Putting him at five is a little aggressive, but that's what you've got to do if you want one of these cheat code quarterbacks that Jamie's talking about. You can learn some things from the preseason, but Dave, you're saying that we don't necessarily need to overreact to everything. I think it's important see. not to overreact to everything. It is important. Okay, yes. one of the quarterbacks that was not mentioned there, but you believe that Joe Burrow will be the MVP of fantasy here. Make your case. Everything that's happened to Joe Burrow this offseason and what the Bengals have done this offseason has been designed to help him have a monster year. Think about it. The offensive line added some talent. The wide receivers, they drafted Jermaine Burton. They still have T. Higgins. Jamar Chase will be there. And then on top of that, what's left with the run game? Joe Mixon's gone. It's Zach Moss and Chase Brown. And Chase Brown's interesting. And Zach Moss is kind of safe as a mid-round pick. I think everything is set up for Joe Burrow to lead the NFL in passing yards and potentially passing touchdowns, provided that he actually stays healthy. And this is his first training camp where he stayed healthy. I think he's going to throw a ton this year. We've seen it before from Joe Burrow where he gets 26 plus fantasy points per game. I think he can get there and maybe a little bit further than that this year. Yeah, he's a great top 10 quarterback. Again, I think you want to lean towards some of the running quarterbacks ahead of him. You should take Richardson ahead of him. You should take Kyler Murray ahead of him. I think C.J. Stroud's got a little bit higher ceiling than Joe Burrow. But obviously, if Jamar Chase is there, and that's really the only thing that you got to be concerned about at this point, is will Chase be there and be committed 100% like we know Jamar Chase is capable of doing? I'd be surprised if that's not the case. But he has to have Chase stay healthy. He has to have T. Higgins stay healthy. He needs to stay healthy himself. So I don't know if he's going to be the MVP, but it's certainly a bold call. That's why we called this bold predictions. All right, let's move from quarterbacks to running backs. And Jamie, your bold prediction for the running backs is that James Cook will lead all running backs in receptions this year. How'd you? Yeah, it's going to take a little bit of a leap, but you're talking about a Bills team that lost 241 targets and their receiving core was Stephon Diggs gone and Gabe Davis gone. And we saw his number spike in the passing game when Joe Brady took over as the offense coordinator. He was on pace for a 60 catch season with Brady in the nine games that they were together, including the playoffs. And he doesn't have to go that much farther to get to being the number one pass catcher at the position. Now he's got to overcome some pretty significant names, Brees Hall and Alvin Kamara in particular. But I do think he's going to be in amongst, amongst the league leaders, which is why you should be taking him in the back end of round two, beginning of round three. This is a running back with top 10 upside. And as you see in our sports line projections in our draft room, he's the number six running back. That's a little bit too aggressive for me. But I do think that if he does get close to being the reception leader or, in fact, live up to this bold prediction and does lead the position in catches, then he will be a borderline top five running back. So he's not going to score a lot of touchdowns. That's a drawback. But I do think in terms of what we talk about for PPR catches, He's going to be amongst the leaders, which is why you should be aggressively drafting James Cook this year. 
Emily, Jamie, this guy has moved up eight spots in our ADP. He is now a late round two pick in full PPR. It's kind of surprising that fantasy managers are ready to trust James Cook after the track record of Bill's running backs. But Jamie just talked about it. What he did after the coordinator change last year really does stand out. The fact that he will catch a lot of passes in this offense, very, very good. I, I, I am a little concerned about the touchdowns, though. I'm worried that he's not going to get any more than, like, seven touchdowns. And taking a running back in round two who's got a ceiling of seven touchdowns, touchdowns, maybe eight if I'm being nice. That's troublesome, but I think the yardage will be there, and I think Jamie's right. He might not lead the league in catches, but he'll have 50-plus. That's good. He's worth – I'll take him in round three, but I'm a little more cautious about these Bills running backs. If you're aggressive, you want a good running back like James Cook seems to be, round two is the time. All right, I got to be honest with you here for this next prediction. I live in Nashville. It's okay. going to be really weird to see Derrick Henry wearing a different color, wearing purple this year, but you have a bold prediction saying that you think that he's going to end up – Bouncing back as a top five running back. To you, it's going to be weird. Mm -hmm. To me, it's going to be awesome. And it's not because I'm a Ravens fan. It's because he landed in the exact right mm -hmm. spot for him to go and take off and have a big year. And last year with Derrick Henry, yeah, he disappointed. It was his first time in five seasons not finishing top five in PPR points per game at running back. Think about Derrick Henry. He does not catch the ball a lot. He scores so much and gets so many yards that he's still great in full PPR. And now he's on Baltimore. This is a team where running backs have come and gone, and they have had awesome efficiency playing alongside Lamar Jackson. Jackson doesn't steal a lot of short yardage touchdowns. Derrick Henry gets a lot of them in general. Now he's going to get even more. Gus Edwards had 13 touchdowns last year. 12 of them were inside the five. Those are all going to fall into Derrick Henry's lap. And here's the best thing. He's 30 years old, so people are going to be a little bit nervous about that. Last year, he didn't play as many reps as he has in years prior because the Titans used him only when they were winning, only when they could run the football. When games, when they were trailing in games, Emily, it was Ty J. Spears, and that's a guy who's still there, and that's somebody that you should be excited about. But I'm excited about Derrick Henry, and I do think he has the upside to finish as a top five fantasy running back, and he is worth drafting in round two. I would take Henry ahead of James Cook. Yeah, don't do that. Take James Cook ahead of Henry in PPR because you want to get those catches. Uh, look, Henry's going to have to probably score 18 to 20 touchdowns to justify being a round two pick. Uh, he makes me nervous. I wouldn't take him until the middle of round three at best. You know, we are talking about a situation here where Gus Edwards scored 13 touchdowns last year and was barely a top 20 running back. Now, obviously, Henry's better. The positive for Henry, as Dave alluded to, is that when they were winning games, he was doing a much better job. Harbaugh averages 10 wins a season during his 16 years in Baltimore. So hopefully they're going to be more they're going to win more games than they are trailing games. But again, he's going to have to do it based on the touchdowns. He's not going to catch a lot of passes, and I don't think we're looking at a 2,000-yard season for Derrick Henry. If he gets a 11, 1,200 yards, I think that's a very good season for him. But if he doesn't get more north of 15 touchdowns, taking him around two is a huge mistake. All right, well, it wouldn't be bold predictions if we just agreed on everything. Sure. So I appreciate the discourse here. Jamie, we'll go to you on some pass catchers. You believe that George Pickens will lead the league in touchdown receptions. Yeah, let's just timestamp this in case Brandon Ayuk <laughs> is traded to Pittsburgh because uh, we're doing this Friday afternoon about 1230. Um, if Ayuk goes to Pittsburgh, then I think this, this gets thrown out the window. Uh, obviously, the quarterback play has got to be much better for the Steelers. But we did see uh, last year Russell Wilson get a 10-touchdown season out of Cortland Sutton. He does have one year on his resume with a wide receiver leading the league in touchdowns. That was Tyler Lockett once upon a time. So we could see the – excuse me, Doug Baldwin once upon a time. Uh, we could see a situation where um, Pickens, who's a big play threat, and last year dominated when Deontay Johnson was off the field. He played much better when it wasn't Kenny Pickett throwing in passes, when it was Mason Rudolph. So I'm excited about Pickens entering year three. Uh, I do think that he's going to lead the, the team in targets and, and hopefully have a third-year breakout. But he's got to do it as a solo act, and certainly the, the quarterback play, the offense as a whole, has to look much better for the Steelers. So if he can get north of 10 touchdowns, which I think is realistic, then he's going to be in the conversation. If he gets 12 to 15, he's going to definitely be in the conversation. Anything north, I think, of 14 or 15 definitely is going to get him this number. So hopefully George Pickens is finding the end zone quite a bit. All right, Dave, your next bold prediction is just that Kyle Pitts doesn't have it. What do you mean by that? 9.9, .9, 7.6, 8.1. I'm not an Olympic judge. Those are the PPR points per game that Kyle Pitts has had in each of his first three seasons in the league. And I understand that people are excited about Kirk Cousins and Michael Penix being in Atlanta, and they expect it to mean big things for Kyle Pitts. I'm betting against that because it's been three years of seeing Kyle Pitts, and he just has not gotten the job done. More importantly, I've seen this Falcons team practice. It was only two days, so it's a couple of data points. But Drake London looks like the number one guy there for me. And on top of that, I saw not only London 
and B. John Robinson get more targets over two days than Kyle Pitts. I saw Darnell Mooney get more targets than Kyle Pitts. And when I watched Pitts, he definitely moved better than he did last year. Emily, last season, he was a mess. This season, he's looking a little bit better, but he's bringing balls into his body. He's playing more with his physicality instead of his speed. These are two things that Kirk Cousins touched on when I asked him about Kyle Pitts, and it makes me nervous that someone who's been in the league now, entering his fourth season, is not doing the things that a pass catcher is supposed to do with the football. I want to be out on Kyle Pitts. I wouldn't take him until round seven. I took him in a draft today with a team that I shared with Jamie. We took him in round six. I was outvoted on Kyle <laughs> Pitts. I would rather have George Kittle and even in full PPR, Evan Ingram ahead of Kyle Pitts. All right, you told me before we started that you have two drafts today, so you can do whatever you want in those drafts. Those are all mine, <laughs> Not yes. draft Kyle Pitts. Not sharing. <laughs> Not sharing. Uh, all right, while we have our fantasy football experts here, I've got to ask because the undrafted fullback Carson Steele has been awesome in the preseason. Looks like he's going to end up with a spot on the Chiefs 53-man roster but fantasy wise Jamie I'll start with you is steal a steal in fantasy had to I mean if you're in a very deep draft sure you could take a flyer on him and see what happens look the backup running back situation in Kansas City is very much in flux right now you know Clyde Edwards Alaire is dealing with something that hopefully will get resolved and he's ready to go and he should be the number two guy there Daneric Prince looks like the next guy up if Clyde can't go but you look, like you said, he's had a great preseason so far. You know, the Chiefs have definitely been great at finding some good players out of nowhere. They did it with Isaiah Pacheco, who was a late round pick in the NFL draft and now has become a superstar. So wouldn't be shocking if he has a role. And hopefully, uh, if you do invest in him, does it give you some fantasy value? But I just don't think this is somebody that's going to matter as long as Pacheco is healthy. And then again, if those other guys are still ahead of him on the depth chart, I think it's difficult for him to make some plays. Wouldn't be surprised if he ends up on the on the uh, practice squad for the Chiefs during the season. It, he's fun to watch. I agree. I think he is going to make the 53-man roster, but he would be like a round 15 type pick. I mean, literally a guy that you're going to stash on your bench. And after week one or week two, you're going to want to pick somebody up off the waiver wire. And if Steele's done nothing, you, you took your chance on him, and then it's time to let him go. But very late round pick but a fun, fun player for sure. Yeah, reevaluate later in the season. We can, always, we can always draft him, cut him, and maybe pick him back up. Plenty of work to be done, guys. Thank you so much for everything. Again, check out this magazine, but also check out Fantasy Football today, not just to get you ready for your draft. They've covered throughout the season all your pickups, trades, start sits. Fantasy Football today. Check it out.